Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to Inspire, Innovate, Ignite Conversations That Count. So glad that you are here, all of you that are here live and those watching the replay today. We have a really great topic. I'm super excited because this is a subject that I just love to dive into. And we have some incredible panelists that are going to be helping to bring this conversation to light. So we're going to be talking about the power of human design. Um, because the world floods us with messages about who we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to act and what we're supposed to do, we've been programmed. And we um we are built to we we all have a design we all have a human design we all have aspects of this human design and so the same way of living for one person is not the same way of living for the other person um, when we're looking at how to live our highest potential and how to live by our design our blueprint our divine blueprint so the road to being your happiest most successful self is totally unique to you and all of your aspects on this design. So human design helps you to recognize what your innate gifts are and um, you know who, who you truly came here to be and what your purpose is. And this helps you to really live in that effortless flow instead of trying to live the way everybody tells you you should. And once you learn about this, you'll go, oh my God, this makes so much sense. <laughs> so our panelists are gonna discuss how we can use the knowledge of human design to step into our power and make the most out of life. So um, we'll be talking more about these panel discussions. They are happening all the time and you can find them more on sacredu.love, um, the website under featured events. And um, we might have time to talk more about that at the end, but there's just so much going on in the sacred you, uh, you community. And um, so check that out if you if you haven't yet. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to just in, introduce all of our guests and um, our panelists, and then we'll dive into the discussion. So I'll start with Allison. Allison is a 6-2 generator with a sacral response authority. And she's here to master her own skills in life and transmute and transform that energy so that she can teach what she's learned. And this is Allison's passion where she loves leading by example. And she is definitely a boots on the ground type gal. Um, her power zone is grounded. And, but it comes with this vein of gold intuitive wisdom that's respected. And offering this guidance is the key to improve and enrich lives through her work. She loves supporting women and offering them the sacred space for deconditioning. Um, and she'll talk more about that and expressing authenticity by designing a business for themselves that allows them to operate in their power zone. Allison's a storyteller by nature with a compassionate and nurturing heart. She's a mom of two teenagers, three dogs, four chickens, and the host of Align by Design Tribe. Um, and then we have Donna. Donna is a positivity coach, eco-entrepreneur, and business consultant, author, show host, blogger, speaker, and holistic chef, chef, specializing in helping others live a legacy lifestyle as a change maker and thought leader. Her motto is why retire when I can when I can inspire. I love that. She's a solutionist. She empowers leaders to live with clarity and stay true to their mission. And for decades, she's been a catalyst for change, guiding individuals and businesses working in the world of human potential to live like the future matters. And then we have Vicki McHale. Vicki spent 30 years as an executive in the common interest development field when sudden and unexpected life changes brought about a spiritual awakening and gifts as a psychic medium. And so she spent the last five years absorbing as much information as she can and experiencing the miracles of the universe, including the book that fell that fell into her lap, which she'll probably talk about, um, about human design. So she describes herself as woo, but not woo woo. And she and her adorable dog, Rocky, live on Lake Travis in Austin, Texas. And, and I'm Lisa and I'm your facilitator. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to just um, hear from the panelists about um, what your type is. If you, if you know what your type is, what your human design type is, what is it and what has that, how has that helped you live more true to yourself? And if, you, if you're not familiar with your type, what do you know about human design and how has that helped you live more true to yourself? So. Um, let's start with Allison because I, I know you you are a generator and generators like to do 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 so go for it. 
<laughs> Generators are doers, that is certain. 75% of the population. Now, my human design chart is, yes, a generator. My profile is 6'2", and my design is to respond to with the sacral energy. What I have learnt from my human design is it is a massive permission slip, massive permission slip to be who you want to be in whatever way, shape, form that looks like. Um, and by doing, following, following my own intuitive guidance along with checking in my human design chart over the years as like an oracle card and going, oh, my God, this resonates so much. I'm just, yep, okay, I'm good. And you get that permission slip to go forward in that energy. Otherwise, it's really a, a healing aspect too because you recognise parts of you that are just, you know, are not true but you don't know how they're not true and it's not until you actually get into the, the depth and wisdom of the actual information around human design that you sit there and go oh right now I get it and then you can make that perspective shift or you can make that energetic shift however in whatever fashion that is leading you down so that's how I found human design to work for me over the years yeah I, I, I'm a projector so yes. I um so I'm kind of the, one of the odd odd ones not not completely not completely not completely odd, but you know, we're like 20% of the population. And when I first heard, so when I first heard about my type, mm -hmm. I was in the corporate career and I was going, 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 doing, doing, doing like a generator. Yeah. And when I heard that I'm a projector and I'm supposed to just like, I don't have any energy and you know, all the things about a projector, I'm like, that is not me. And I pushed it to the side for until about 2017 when I started really living my design and allowing it to be that permission slip. So yeah, more. absolutely. And that's one of the, one of the really hardest comprehending things that I find is when someone finds out who they are, they tend to go, Oh no, that's not me. But then when you actually reflect on it, you go, Oh yeah, that's, that's really some, that's some of me. <laughs> yeah, that is me. And maybe I should take that on board. And then the other parts oh, I don't like so much. <laughs> Well, and because when, when I, when I did live by design, when I started deconditioning and living by my design, things got so much easier and more spacious and more graceful in my life. Flow, be just, flow actually starts to occur. It's, it's beautiful. So yes. Awesome. Thank you. So um, Vicki, would you like to go next? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Vicki, and I'm a 4-6 generator, emotional. Um, and if you would have told me that six months ago, I would have told you you were crazy. <laughs> but um, I am finding so many things make sense to me. And I am just starting my human design journey. But Spirit brought me human design five years ago. And I kind of read it, the book, and put it on the shelf. Um, and then I started because I was normal, everyday executive. I didn't even know about tarot cards or all the spiritual stuff. And then one day I have this awakening and I started stepping into my gifts and I had no direction. And so I started listening to a lot of different teachers and gurus and a lot of it, I got to say, did not resonate with me. And so I'm listening to people telling me I have to be a vegan and I have to go to bed at seven o'clock at night and wake up at five o'clock in the morning. And I'm thinking, I I I'm not going to make it, <laughs> you know? And so um, I finally asked spirit, I said, what, what is, what am I not connecting here? Because even giving readings and stuff that some things that I heard myself saying, I, I, afterwards I'd go, I know I got the message, but the way I presented it doesn't seem right. And so human design kind of came back into my vision. And all of a sudden, now, when I read the book five years later, it made so much sense to me and kind of was a huge piece of the puzzle in all of the breadcrumbs that, that have, have been a part of my journey. 
So. I love that. Thank you. It's, it's so fun to see how those things just kind of fall into place and fit together, but you do have to be on the path, right? You have to be open to what's falling in front of you. Cause if you're not open to seeing what's falling in front of you, then those pieces, they don't seem like they come into. And they kept falling in front of me and I, but something wasn't right. And I knew there had to be more to this than just what people were putting out. And so I, um, I can see where this is going to kind of lead me on my journey to actually help people get to know their truth instead of trying to fit into what somebody else is telling them should be their truth. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. I love to do mini human design readings just for marketing because the way that you market um, for business owners is different depending on your design. And people don't realize that. And they're like, I'm doing all this stuff that everybody tells me to do and it's not working. Right. So, so it's, it, it is, it's really, it's really enlightening. Thank you. So Donna, I'd love to hear from you. Oh, well, I am new to human design and looking at it. I am happen to be a generator, an emotional generator. And I write on cue because I'm a very emotional, sensitive empath type person. Um, just like astrology and all these uh, different modalities of tapping into oneself. Um, I think what you said that was so interesting, um, Lisa, earlier is like people try and put us in these boxes and I am a voice for nature. I am a nature vor. I am a soul, S-O-U-L, solutionist. And I have a model which I live by and help a lot of people find themselves is the closer we get to na nature, the closer we get to our true nature. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is the ultimate human design. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, the further we get from nature, the further we get from knowing who we are and who we are as people and as humanity, as a, as a species on the planet. And we are animals, right? We are nature. We are made up of 98% of all the same minerals, compounds. We are, we are the human design that is from nature. So I come from that perspective of um, really eager to learn about um, all of these different kinds of modalities. And I also come from that place of bringing us all back to earth and to recognizing that sometimes all it takes is just hugging a tree, walking barefoot on the earth, feeling the energy that energy that connects all of us without looking at any charts, but by looking at the divine web of life looking at the how the mycelium attaches the entire planet earth together and our brains are very look like a mycelium under the microscope that to me is the ultimate design yeah. so it's just, because it's just, i'm new to all of this i'm so eager as part of a panelist to come from that perspective and learn so much of this from from all of you yeah this is going to be great. It's going to be great. Appreciate your, your perspective on that. And, and, you know, it, it is really important for us to embody the energy that we're here to embody. And I think, um, being one with nature is definitely like one way to do that. And human design brings in many different cultures and their way of seeing the world. And so it brings in the I Ching and it brings in the chakra system and it brings in astrology and so many other aspects of how different cultures make sense of who we are and the, the solar system around us. Um, so I think that's really interesting. And I'd, I'd love to hear, um, okay, I'd, I'd love to hear from, um, whoever is interested to talk about this is, um, you know, how, how you feel human design helps you be recognized. And we talked about the permission slip earlier. So how does human design give you that permission slip personally? And, and how do you, how can you bring that to other people? So Allison, would you mind starting on that? 
Where could I start? Jeez, there's so many. Human design on a whole is so huge, yet to pinpoint one one piece that's helped helped me to be recognized, it's like knowing myself. It's like showing up for me first before it's like self before service or service before self. It's like I need to know who I am and how I fit into my little jigsaw piece before I can show up for everyone else. Um, and when you embody those aspects of your human design chart with your permission slip to like, okay, I'm a generator, I'm here to be like I'm a worker bee, right? How can I make my energy work for me? And this was the massive question I asked when I found out that I was just a, a generator because I was like, no, I don't feel like a generator. It's like, how can I make this energy work for me? So I did a whole bunch of research into that. And then from that awareness, put it into practice. So I think that really the only way that human design is going to help you recognize yourself is by putting it into action. You know, embodying it here as a grounded energy on earth because this is what you imprinted. To, you, can, you chose to come here at a certain time. Right, the time is now. You came to choose. You came to come here at this time. There is a reason for that. For that, human design supports that recognition of of who you are, so you can go ahead and do that. But at the end of the day, it's us and Earth as a combined energy that needs to help and support each other. So the more you know about yourself, the more you recognize who you truly are authentically. I think is how you can actually show up as a, as a recognized human. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. You know, when I, again, going back to finding out that I was a projector and that all I have to do when I'm not, when I don't have the energy, when I'm replenishing, when I'm, you know, waiting for the invitation, that's my strategy is wait for the invitation, which at, in business is, is kind of a hard thing to do. Yeah, to that. Right. But <laughs> I get to play. I get to be in joy. I get to do the thing. That's my permission slip to be able to do the things that I really want to do that bring me joy that also give me recognition when, when I share. So if I share just like, Hey, look, I, you know, bent this spoon or, Hey, look, I'm doing art or whatever I'm doing that I'm having fun with that gets recognized. And then people invite me in. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a different way of being than I ever did because I I lived as a generator. Well, as a generator, you would have been just like, I have to do this and I have to do that. There would have been, it kind of feels like there would have been a task list for you that you would have had to do like A to Z every single day and it would have exhausted you. I noticed my son, who's also a projector, it was in that system of, right, he's got to get up at 7 a.m. for school, he's got to be at school by 9, he's got school all day, he's got then training, he's then got this, he's then got that, and then he goes to bed. He was exhausted and come Saturday, Sundays, he was sleeping in till 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon trying to catch up on what was missed from the exhaustion, and it's just a burnout cycle that just never stops, right? Even as generators, if we go to the extreme of worky bee energy, we burn out too. Mm -hmm. So so paramount, the first things first of any human design chart is recognize who you are and how that works for you. I love that. Thank you, Allison. Donna, I'm interested to hear your perspective on on recognition, how you how you recognize, you, you mentioned the mycelium and recognizing that as being part of the earth. What what else helps you? in nature, recognize yourself and give you permission to be your authentic self? Oh, that's a great question. And when we look at the systems and cycles of nature, whether it's autumn, winter, spring, or fall, I mean, winter, spring, summer, or fall, so, um, kind of like we look at the cycles of our moon, women menstruating, right? we women all all used to why we on our moon cycles because we all used to menstruate with the moon until all these lights came on and we have lost that uh connection with our biological and our mental self but by living within the systems and cycles of nature we understand and we recognize by human design that there are 
uh, times of the year where we feel more hibernation or more outward. Um, there are also cycles in our lives, like your son, for instance, um, you know, uh, Allison, you were saying how he sleeps. To, he's a teenager, right? So there's also these cycles when pre-menopause, post-menopause, all of these phases in our lives, where sometimes I feel like a generator and sometimes I feel like one of the other, some, uh, I can feel all different ways and give myself permission. I love what you said about the permission slip. It's just realizing, okay, I just turned 65. I'm tired at three o'clock. I just am. And, and, and for all those years, just being in denial about that. But that's part of the aging cycle. That's part of nature's cycle. Um, and accepting that is not always easy when you're a generator, because I am a generator. <laughs> and um, so when I look to nature and I, get, I can get the permission that the birds at sunrise and sunset is when they chirp the loudest and when they're hunting for their foods, right? And understanding my biorhythm and which parts of the day where my brain functions better and where my body moves more. And, and that's a permission slip in itself because when you're at a certain age and you're a generator, you can go 12, 15 hours a day. And when you're 65 and you're a generator, uh, you don't have the same stamina. So um, accepting these cycles, um, that permission slip, which I just love. You, I'm going to keep coming back to that. I'm going to use that, Lisa, all the time. I'm giving myself permission. So turning our computers off when the sun goes down or shortly after and, op and, and, and opening our eyes to the sun first thing in the morning rather than the screen is going to help us no matter where we are in the human design by being in connected with those cycles of the day. And then I noticed even when, when I was in my 20s and 30s, I was very much uh, into the whole metaphysical way uh, uh, in Native American studies. And I was doing a lot of sweat lodges and um, a lot of crystal work and spiritual. Not that I don't, I don't, I, do, I was doing a lot. And I still do a little. And I noticed when I started doing that, man, uh, and the people I was hanging out, we sure enough, we all got, we all went on the moon at the same time. This community I was living with, all of us were all on that rag at the same time. So, and I, I don't want to uh, sound woo woo. Uh, it's like um, what, who Vicky was saying that the, the master of woo, but not woo woo. It, it, this is just a little woo, but it's true. It's true because if you look at um, women in different cultures, um, Lisa, how you were mentioning earlier, in the different cultures around the world, I mean, a lot of women, when they would have their period, they would go into the cave and they would sit, they would have their periods together. Um, now we, we, we don't have that opportunity to be so close to nature and to our true nature. And I'm loving the permission that I'm giving myself now as I get older that I'm not, it doesn't matter what someone else, those judgments or those things I'm 65, I feel more alive and I'm going to be me and whatever that is. Um, uh, it, it's very, it's a very cool cycle of life. So I hope that answered your question and, um, I know I love what you what you've been saying all of it and the cycles and and um, and for something that I just came across a couple years ago was this beautiful tree and it was bent and crooked and sticking out of the side of a mountain and I'm like oh, that is so beautiful and I'm mm. thinking why don't we do that with people why don't we do that with everyone why don't we feel like so when you're talking about the next stage of life or how we view ourselves or what the what what we're programmed to do in this life it's like we're programmed in so many areas and one of them is what we're supposed to be doing or what we're supposed to be looking like or what we're supposed to you know all that stuff so I love that you brought that up thank you and I hope my tree was understandable <laughs> but Absolutely. I just you know 
<laughs> yeah. So, so thank you. That was perfect. And Vicki, I'd love to hear from you. Sure. I forgot the question or did you give me one? <laughs> yeah. So just, just how, how you, um, you know, you know that you're a generator and how does that give you permission to be authentically you? What have you found? Well, yeah. As I said, I'm new to my journey. And so I'm just starting the deconditioning. Decon um, but just the experiment, like learning to respond, like hear such amazing things like have come out of this just in the beginning. I could go as an emotional generator, I'm supposed to wait to respond. And I am not supposed to make a decision when I'm extremely happy or when I'm extremely sad, which how many times have I been in a group and I'm excited and somebody says, hey, let's go jump off a cliff. And I'm like, yeah. And the next day I'm like, what in the hell was I thinking? Like, I don't want to do that. Or um, I'm in a bad mood. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. And then everybody goes. And then I sit home and I'm like sad because everybody had a great time. And so that is one of the things that I've really had to learn is I cannot make those decisions. And if I can't come to kind of emotional clarity, if I can't get off those high highs or those low lows and something passes me by, like it, it gets rid of that FOMO fear of missing out because it wasn't really meant for me to begin with. Like that, that non answer was an answer. And so when I first started learning, learning human design, I learned about the sacral noises and boy, uh, my sacral noises I, are really loud, but there is no truth in the moment for me. It has to be when I'm relaxed. And, you know, I spent my first 60 years thinking I was a manifester and just bullying my way through things. And um, also I'm undefined head Ajna and, and wheel center. And so I, if you take me to like Tony Robbins seminar, or if I watch QVC, I'm going to buy everything and I'm going to be excited because I need that poncho in 14 colors or, you know, I'm going to go do this. And then I can't tell you how many thousands and thousands of dollars I've spent on this. And now I know, like if I get in a room with, with people with defined head and Ajna centers and, and I, I know what I'm going to do and da, 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 da. I know right away that I need to step back, that my, my open centers are being am, impacted by somebody there. So it has been amazing just kind of showing me why I made some of the, the mistakes that I did. Um, and I will also say I'm a four, six profile, which is a very unique profile because for our first 30 years, we actually live as a three, one. And we take on every person that's bad for us and we learn lesson after lesson. Unfortunately, I didn't know this. So after 30, I just kept going, not knowing what this was. And then living with a man who defined head, throat, will center, Ajna, I just kind of took on his personality thinking what he liked was what I liked. And then I got divorced after 35 years and I didn't know what to think. Like it was, so it's, it's been amazing once and I couldn't figure out why, but once you kind of get into that and you learn this stuff, it's amazing what it opens up for you. I love that you mentioned both of those things, Vicki, because it's, it is really important to know your authority and how you make decisions best because I'm just like you, I'm an emotional and like, I have spent so much money on, yes, I'm in. Yes. You know, and then also I'm a four, six. So I think uh, Christy said she's a four, six. And I think, I mean, you're, yeah, you're a four, six. So very interesting. So it really helps understanding your human design really helps to uncover a lot of the things that 
that you can um, utilize to make your life more easy. I just, I love it. So Christy, welcome. And let me introduce introduce you. So Christy is one of our other panelists. She's a human design and self-care expert, author, and speaker on a mission to help busy women stop overworking and start overflowing. And she hosts a virtual community for female personal development junkies like herself to create better wellness, improve relationships, shift mindsets, and manifest more success, wealth, and freedom to live their best life by design. Christy is lead author of a best-selling Amazon book called Over Stop Overworking and Start Overflowing, 25 Ways to Transform Your Life Using Human Design, published in October 2021 through Brave Healer Productions with 25 other human design practitioners. So I want to say welcome. And then what I also want to do is I want to um, ask the audience. We've got people listening on different platforms, and we've also got people here live. So I would like to ask if you have any specific questions about human design, um, if you want to just type them into the comments and Angel will bring them over to us. Um, if you're here live on the on the Zoom call, just go ahead and type them into the chat and we'll get your questions answered because that's that's the fun part for all of us is to interact with you all and um, and you know, help you understand better what you what you want to understand. So Christy, we were just kind of going around the room and saying what kind of um, what what we were, what type we are and how that's impacted our lives and how it's helped us um, really have a better understanding of how to live authentically. So maybe you'd like to just give a give a little bit of of your info there. Yeah, thank you for uh, having me. And I'm so grateful to be among all of these wonderful spirits. I've been listening in a little bit before I got a chance to come on. And I um, am here in the States uh, on the East Coast. And I discovered human design about five, six years ago. So I think I'm still going through the deconditioning process. I think that takes seven years. <laughs> um, I'm a four, six peer generator. And about two years ago, I just had this opportunity to step away from a career in marketing that I had. And I used my human design to actually lead me to this path of teaching it and sharing it. Um, it really had a profound impact at that time a few years ago when I said, you know what, I'm going to just listen to my authority. I'm just going to start responding to the opportunities that I felt were the right things for me. It led me to a couple of book collaborations, um, to speaking opportunities, podcasts, and then um, eventually the, the book that I produced. So it's um, definitely had a profound impact for me. And now I love to share and teach it. That's great. Thank you so much. It's yeah, it's really it, it is life changing if you are in the right place, the right time to to be open to learn it. I think, um, you know, when that happens, when all the stars align, you're like, oh, OMG. So you mentioned deconditioning and I would love to go around the room, the virtual room here and and learn from each of you your experience on deconditioning. And so Christy, maybe you can just start by, by telling us what deconditioning is and then what your experience has been. And then we'll, we'll go from there. Sure. And what I usually say is, you know, our human design being based on our birthday is how we were encoded, so to speak, to come into this world, but we know we have life experiences and even things from our uh, past generations and ancestral lineage. And when we recognize that what we may believe or the way we do things or our habits are really not in alignment with our human design, then it gives us the opportunity to wonder where did it come from? And usually it's conditioning or programming from outside sources. Um, for me, one example was I have an Eastern European background. So working hard was something that um, we did to achieve success. But as a generator, although I like to do work and be productive, I need to do it in a responding way. So it helped to shift my conditioning but I also bring into the self-care because we all need to do some inner work, some self-growth, and sometimes working with healing practitioners to remove blocks and change our mindset and our programming. So it's, um, it's definitely a big piece of helping you to be in that authentic 
human design that we're meant to uniquely be in. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's great. Allison, I'd love to hear from you on this. Um, deconditioning and experiences, holy crackers, too many. <laughs> Um, I've been working with human design. Well, my children are 16 and 18, and I found out a few years before that on my human design. So it's been quite a quite a journey when it comes to human design and learning different aspects. But really, the deconditioning, coming back to this permission slip, it's not your fault either. Like, you didn't know any better. So the the we we tend to when we're going through this deconditioning process and i know i did it in the early days it's like i was blaming shaming judging myself for my own decisions back then that were out of alignment based on the conditioning i was offered at the time so i i kind of came into acceptance of like okay this is not me this is not the direction I would like to head on going forward now that I have awareness around this. So what is my soul aligned truth internally and how can I follow that? And it's been a very active and proactive journey doing that, you know, and it's not, I really, I really believe that this deconditioning process, um, I know Christy said it was seven years, but it kind of feels like it's never ending. You know, we, we're here to have this human experience. We're here to learn lessons, have fun, go do stupid shit, like all of the things, right, but always coming back to our authentic self, you know, and nothing is, it's not... It's not a blame game. It's not a. It's not someone's fault in the conditioning process. It's just kind of how it's been. And the way the energy is shifting on the planet now, it's like, okay, so this is where we once were. Collectively, we don't want to go back there. So let's move forward and let's start to do things differently. And then so then new conditioning happens from that place anyway. Um, but it's really having a very high conscious awareness of what's going on. Yeah, of what's what's true for you and what's what other people yeah. are telling you is true for you. And a lot of this, um, just as a bit of a, a, a polarity, we're in a world of instant gratification. So when we when we do a design chart or we read something about ourselves, we kind of instantly expect us to instantly know the answer. It's really not true either. You know, process. it's a process. It's, 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 a, it's a journey of like there is still shit that I read 10, 15 years ago that have only just come into light now, right? Because like you go, oh, I remember when I had that conversation with that person and, oh, my God, it now all makes fucking sense. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yep. yep. That there is just like this little unraveling um, of deconditioning, of conditioning that you have that you just... It's just a, a daily thing. It's just being conscious because it's you don't being... recognize what you don't recognize until you recognize it. <laughs> so, you know, until you're aware of it. So yeah, and and so just having, you know, if if for me deconditioning stands for if shit don't work, if you don't like it, this is your opportunity to change it. And look at and look at yourself, reflect, and go. Well, actually, don't I, I like that part of the journey, but I didn't like that part. So, I'll continue on that aspect. But how can I fix or not fix, but shift that ever so slightly that it gives me joy, that it brings me more truth, feeling, authenticity, whatever that main goal is that you're achieving. And that's what community helps you do. That's what people around you help you do too, because they're reflectors for you. And you can look at you can look at yourself better when you have that reflection. And um, instead of just going into, I mean, of course, we all need to cocoon sometimes. But instead of just going into a total, I need to be serious and by myself to figure this out. No, that's not how we're meant to work either. No, we are. We are. <laughs> We are all the one, we all come from the same light. 
So therefore we all have a piece of everybody within us. So it's really just going, okay, this is a shadow part of me that I don't particularly like about myself. How can I make that come to a bigger, brighter light that stands for me? Yeah. You know, coming back to Donna saying, uh, you know, I'm 65 and I get to do whatever the hell I want now because age for me is that, you know, that permission slip. It's like, yeah. Yeah, great. Perfect. Thank you. Let's let's go to Donna. Donna. <laughs> Oh, th this is great. You know, I, I wrote a book um, that helped me deconstruct everything. It's called Living Like the Future Matters. It's right behind me. The Evolution of a Soul to Soul Entrepreneur. And it's kind of like talks about a lot of uh, the human design. But one of my favorite chapters in the book is called Deconstructing the Ego. And I um, talk about composting what doesn't serve you and nourishing what does kind of like what you were just talking about Allison like how do we how do we do that because no everybody knows if you don't nourish even the compost it stinks you know you need to aerate it and and you need that oxygen to keep it going and 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 moving and I and I always say you know well this part of our human design everything we, we poop every day right and our egos you know can either some people walk around with these inflated egos I don't care if you're a, rege what, a regenerator or a prospector or whatever you are. Um, we go through these times in our life and then some people have no ego, they can hardly stand up. And when we deconstruct that and we look at the ego and we realize that, hey, if the ego is a pea size, like thinking that peas are good for us, good size, and it fits through the, the end. And every day we get to recreate this human design that we call us who we are. And I love knowing that every day that I get to wake up and I get to be who I am right now, be here now and, and, and change with that. To me, that is the ultimate design that we have been given that has been beaten out of us because we've been, you know, we, we go to we grow up in a house and then we go to a college dorm or we to train us to move into an apartment to move into a city and all of the social constructs that are really not the way humans are supposed to live and we lose we lose ourselves in all of that and i find it really interesting on this conversation that most of us are generators most of us are four sixes and most of us are emotional because everyone all of us on the panel i think um pretty much hit that except um lisa you, you are a little different which is super cool and you're doing a great job facilitating this by the way i couldn't do it because i'm a generator but i'm just saying well maybe i could maybe i'll wake up tomorrow maybe i would you know because i do have my own show but you you have a real gift at what you're doing so i think it's like accepting that wow here we're, we're all f f falling into this generator four six emotional but we couldn't be more different people and giving ourselves permission to be genuinely who we are and every day giving ourselves the opportunity to wake up with that pea-sized ego and look at and start it's a new day and i think what keeps people especially since the whole COVID era and before but emphasizing is fear 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 has constipated no matter what human design we're meant to be that fear just crushes and, and and has has really gone heavy on 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 humanity and freedom lies on the other side of fear i know i and can say that too <laughs> coming together right with this beautiful group and everybody who's listening and 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 i want to just mention this right now because we're coming in the in the in the chat you guys a lot of you people are listening right now on the live stream and who've come in there is a link in there that allison put in to take you to the human design chart and i really encourage everybody to go go do it with with a grain of salt or a grain of sand to realize, you know, you are more than that chart, but it will help. It will help. It helps all of us. The more information we have, the more informed we can be. 
And if we are informed that freedom lies on the other side of fear, and that's what we walk around with all day, and we say to ourselves, am I living like the future matters when I drink this or Coca-Cola out of a can versus lime juice and honey in water infused with mint leaves? So that is a choice we get to make. And when we start making these choices, we can compost what doesn't serve us. We, we get rid of those old habits. We get rid of those um, things that try to box us in that make us fearful. And we make a choice, then we can truly live like the future matters with a pea-sized ego, compost what doesn't serve us, and nourish what does. And I commend everybody for showing up today and and taking a good look at your human design look at your chart and take it take it all in and 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 use that as this information that's only if you use, make make sure you use it to, to to for the positive and just because it says doesn't mean it is but it there's something there for each of us to garnish some from from that yeah. and deconstruct it as you will yeah Beautiful. Yeah, we all we have a choice and Allison says lack of awareness to choose. So we stay in fear, which is true. I always say fear is the thing that's going, come on, this is where you need to go. Come on. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's I love your idea, your your example of composting what doesn't serve you and deconstructing. And that's that's beautiful. Thank you, Donna. And Vicki, I'd love to hear from you. And then what we're going to do after this is I, I'd love to have you, all of the panelists, share a description of their um, offer, their free gift or your offer or how people can reach you. And so if you want to get those links ready to put in the chat, um, that'd be great. But Vicki, let's hear from you on deconditioning and how that's how that's happened and what you've learned and your journey on about that. Oh. I haven't, I'm, I'm just starting the deconditioning. I'm, I'm in the point where when people first kind of get into this, they go down the rabbit hole and all they do is listen to things and, and, and research it. Um, but I'll tell you a, a quick little story. Five years ago, I was in a spiritual shop in Encinitas, California. And I said, spirit, if there's anything I need to know, let me know. And I'm walking and this book flew off the shelf at just flew and landed at my feet. So I picked it up. I read it. I figured out my chart. And then I promptly put it away. And so as I'm going through my journey, as I said earlier, things weren't really stacking up for me. And so I asked spirit, where do I need to go? And human design came back into my vision. So, um, and, and this is a perfect kind of example of waiting to respond. Um, I reached out to a gal that I had known this whole time that teaches human design. And she tells me that she's doing a deconditioning, um, not seminar, whatever. I can't think of the word of it. Seminar, whatever, in Tulum, Mexico. I had never heard of Tulum. I found out it was right near um, Cancun. So I said, okay, I'm going to try to do this via my design. So the first step of the design is to put it out there to the universe and then wait for a signary synchronicity and then respond. So that night I put it out there and the next morning I got a message from Sophia and she never met Sophia. She says, I noticed on your, your bio in meetup that you're into human design we're having a panel. Would you like to be on it? And I went, I think that's a sign. <laughs> and so I kind of chuckled and I said, okay, um, you know, I don't know a lot about this, but here's what I can offer. And she says, that's great. So I was neither at a high or a low and I knew I kind of wanted to go. So I then went back and said, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm not working a full-time job right now. So I was a little concerned. Um, so then I put it out there. Spirit, are you sure I'm supposed to do this? Because that's where that fear comes up. I have heard people say the word Tulum or I have opened magazines and it says Tulum more times since then. So 
it's just amazing because I do get a lot of signs and synchronicities and but this was so specific that I would end up kind of on here because I've been thinking is this something I want to study is this something I want to teach going down the line and kind of incorporate into my business so I just find it amazing that when you're ready to go on the journey that you put it out there and it couldn't have been set up any better it's like my guides were I think they're like it's about time <laughs> like five years yeah. so that's um, great. Yeah. Christy says HD finds you when you're ready. And Allison says, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that too. I love that. So um, I'd love to hear about all of your, the panelists offers um, or how, pe how people listening or watching can, can reach you. Um, so Vicki, do you want to start just real briefly and we can go briefly because we've got about three minutes left. Um, if you have a website or if you have a free gift. Um, I actually, I go live on my Facebook page. It's, and I'll type it into the, the chat. It's PsyChick, P-S-Y hyphen Chick, C-H-I-C-K, Soul Connections. And I do um, readings, uh, psychic readings. I do some mediumship readings. I've kind of stepped back since human design from the psychic readings because I feel this is the piece of the puzzle I wasn't looking but I do still do a lot of the, the mediumship readings. So if anybody would like to come on by, we'd love to have you. Great, awesome, thank you. And um, Allison, do you, do you wanna go next and then also talk a, a little bit about your tribe? Sure, I was just putting the details into the comments. So, um aligned by design the human design tribe is in the sacred you community um we have tribe meetings every fortnight on a friday we are currently working through the centers so we've just started the centers we're working through the head and going through each phase we're just this is an educational aspect of what i like to share based on my own experiences alongside you know your own experiences and what's coming up for you inside each each session because we all have different parts and pieces that are coming up for us and it's not always the same way and i look at a human design chart like an oracle card let's pull one section out and let's deal with that one step at a time because you don't overwhelm yourself um so my free gift today is to spend 45 minutes with me to find your signature success with a soul alignment session and a mini HD psychic session. Oh, nice. Okay, and that that link is going to be also. I'm just the... about to finish putting that in there. Yep. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And Christy. So thank you. I posted um, the Facebook group that I run called Christie's Human Design and Self-Care Community. And there I usually post the events and things that I'm doing as well as inspiration. Um, I usually start uh, folks off with a free overview of human design. I do once a month on the last Wednesday. And that's usually kind of to dip your toes in. And then you can come to me for a, a reading, uh, individual or group. I do groups as well. And um, I'm really focused on helping people understand the basic elements. And then from there, they can go down the rabbit hole. They can do can deconditioning with uh, energy practitioners. And so I'm sort of um, help them along that journey. Beautiful. Thank you. And, and yeah, so all again, listeners and watchers, <laughs> every, all the links are going to be um, accessible where, where you can find them underneath the video or, or wherever you are. So Donna. So you guys in the, it, uh, at the very um, top, I, I put, a, mm, I'm putting in something right now too, as well. But my, my, my main gift to you all is um, I'm starting a new membership with some just beautiful professional health practitioners and um, eco entrepreneurs, also change makers and thought leaders and professional chefs. And 
this membership is is launching next month and it's gonna be really cool and we were going to be doing it for fifteen dollars um for for the first month and if you put in you'll see the directions that are in there you can put in the word team and it's going to be at the 97 dollar level so the mastermind groups you guys would all absolutely love it we're just talking about our careers and how living like the, and working like the future matters can can change our world and the world at large and then the other thing i'm putting in um the chat uh you'll see i just put it in there um anyway the membership is normally going to be 97 dollars, so it's free for a month and then i have a 47 dollar level so you guys are all everybody who's listening please take advantage you can go on on the link and see where it'll take you and I also have a podcast, well, it's actually a live broadcast called A Dose of Positivity. And I would love if you want to reach out to me, any of you want to speak on human design, it would probably be, it would be cool. I, I put in the links to the podcast and YouTube channel so you can look at the replays and see how you might fit in. I've interviewed people like Sally Fallon, Alan Cohen, really won wonderful thought leaders. And Sophie Soul is coming on in November, uh, no, in October. I am gonna be interviewing Sophie and I'm very excited about that. And there's also a link to, to my, my books there. And Living Like the Future Matters, The Evolution of Soul to Soul Entrepreneur, that particular book is on sale for 99 cents in, uh, on Amazon till Friday. So that's another, maybe not freebie, but I only do it every once or twice a year. So go grab yourself a copy of that for 99 cents and I'd be so grateful. And um, love, love, love this time and thank you for allowing me to share all that with you. Yeah, thank you. And thank all of you panelists for being here and all of the guests and, that, and everyone watching. Thank you for being here and um, yeah, we have so many more events like this going on through through the community and just encourage you to go to um, our website, sacredlove.sacredu.love. <laughs> and um, that link will also be in the, um, on somewhere or wherever you're watching. And um, you can check that out under the featured events and see what else is coming up. Just sign up for to any topics that you like. And you can also um, sign up to be a community member and get so many more perks, like all these different tribes. Um, you can join them and just so much immense value. And right now it's just, um, you can join for just a dollar for three weeks. So, and check it out, check all of that out. So all those links will be available to you. And so, so grateful for all of you. Thank you for your wisdom. So much fun. And um, I think with that, we'll say goodbye to everyone. So thank you.